All right, well, let's get one started point, on, on some of these good the running backs. Rookie running and back. And some of these bad running backs that we're going to cover today, right? Yes, sir. All right, first up, Jonathan Brooks, Texas running back, six foot and three eighths inches height wise. <laughs> He's 216 pounds, nine and a quarter inch hands. He has got 31 and a half inch arms. His wingspan is 75 and seven eighths inches, and that's it because torn ACL. Didn't get to run. In November, we didn't get any of the athletic measurables. Yeah, it's a shame this guy tore his uh, <coughs> Jonathan Brooks. Last year, in 11 <laughs> games, he had a 1,139 right. yards rushing, 10 touchdowns, 25 receptions, 286 yards receiving, and an additional touchdown. Sorry, Rich. I slow played that on accident. I didn't mean to leave no, such a pause. Totally fine. Uh, Jonathan Brooks out of Texas. And it is a shame that he tore his ACL in November. He, they're saying he's going to be ready. He's saying he's going to be ready here to start off the camp because out of all the running backs tape that I've watched so far, um, other guys we're going to talk about today and tomorrow, like he was my favorite running back that I've seen so far. Agreed. There's a guy who's pretty close. Um, but if I had to take one here that I think would have, if he would have stayed healthy, that would sneak into the first round of your rookie draft. It still has a potential to sneak into the first round of your rookie draft. It'd be Jonathan Brooks out of Texas. And, you know, I was talking to uh, Jared about that today on the phone earlier this afternoon. Uh, we had a meeting about something, and I told him, I was like, you know what comp I really liked? I was like, I like Garrett's comp of Aaron Jones. And then Jared's like, well, I gave him that comp, but yep. then I took that comp from Nick Ercolano. <laughs> yeah. so, but he took, it from, no, <laughs> he took it from Aaron Jones, the current <laughs> Minnesota Viking running back. So, And I thought it was a really good comp. This is somebody who comes in, and he, he, he first of all, not a lot of tread on the tires, right? Not a lot of carries. In Plenty of tread on the tires. Plenty of tread on the tires. You always say that backwards, by the way. I just say a lot of things backwards. <laughs> out of out of a draft class that consists of a lot of older guys, he's sure. nice and young. I forgot to mention the fact that he's only 20 years old, and he'll turn 21 in July. Which is awesome. Yeah. So he's only got 238 total carries in college. Uh, I, I really like that he's, he's an all-around running back, yes. right? He can run between the tackles. He's really good to uh, getting dump off passes. Can run some routes, catches the ball really well. He was top ten in yards after contact, according to Pro Football Focus. And everything he does is just really nice. I mean, he's got good vision. He can see the field very well. Cuts nice. His hands are really good. He 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 could, he could pick up and get some good bursts going there at the same time. He sees his lanes well. Gets the outside. Can work inside. Really nice running back. D- didn't see a lot. I didn't love. Um, he wasn't, he wasn't overly dynamic, you know, he's not a real physical guy, right? Not, right. not very powerful. That, not very that powerful. was, that was probably the, the biggest knock that I had on him. Cause I agree with you, Rich. He's the top guy that I, from these next two days that we're going to talk about, he's my top guy and he could very well end up being my top guy. He ended up with a, a 74.83 uh, grade for me, which is, you know, a, a very solid score. Basically once they hit in our in our nerd score model once they hit over that 72 there's a really good chance that they're going to be a solid running back over 74 almost all of those guys are legit nfl running backs so uh getting over that 74 mark is is a really good sign but that was the biggest thing that matt said that i noticed was he wasn't as physical as i think he could be for a guy that a little bit taller got decent build to him 216 yeah that's Uh, I would like to see a little more of that, Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll see if that's coached a little bit more. But that's that's one of those things where usually guys either kind of have that naturally or they don't. Yes. Typically, you don't see guys getting more physical in the NFL. I agree with that, and you know he's very laterally explosive. Mm -hmm. I think he's he's dynamic in that kind of aspect of his game. It does sometimes. I feel like he relies on that a little bit too much, and it can lead to a little bit of dancing, um, where. I think if he had that physical aspect of the game, it would be more of a one cut and just get in there and kind of try to make a hole. You, you see none of that. So that's a little bit uh, the knock that I could find on the guy. That's That was my knock on him. So um, yeah, and I feel like maybe playing through contact, you know what I mean? Like the, a lot of the times – Finishing. Finishing. Uh, that's that's where he, I think he needs to take a step at the next. It's level. my number one lack yeah. on him too. Like he doesn't yeah. finish strong. Totally is what I wrote is my biggest snack. But I loved like, I loved how like he was able to, the speed he had the speed to get to the outside, and then I liked the way his vision was on the outside where he hit the lanes and he he his fluidity was really nice. Totally. And agree. I also liked how even then when you take him and you put him between the tackles, like 
how fluid he was, like how, how loose his hips were in between those tight spaces where he was able to move around inside a pocket. So like all around, like I didn't see somebody that was like, oh, like somebody like Brees Hall, who's just explosive no, through those no. you know, like lanes like that. But somebody who would be like a poor man, like Aaron Jones, like, you know, that kind of version. I know Aaron Jones isn't a poor man, Brees Hall. You can say he was a poor man. Or but he was Jones. a fifth round draft pick. I mean, in that right. for a reason. Yeah. And he got better. And he could turn I mean? to something yeah. along those lines. And, and this is, and that's the thing with his youth and everything as well. Sure. I can envision John, Jonathan Brooks out of Texas being a better NFL running back than we even saw in college. Like, I don't, I think there's a lot of ripening of that fruit to come. <laughs> what? what, what? <laughs> Sorry. I was about to ask a question, but ripening, uh, it just got me. Right. Um, ripening. How the fast? Fr- how fast do you think that guy is? I know we're not going to get a time on him ever at this point. Four uh, five. That's what I. That's I had what, like a four four five is kind of what I thought. Okay. So that's what I thought as well. Like I mean, I think I feel like this guy would be an easy slam dunk, super dynamic guy if he was like a four three five, like four sure. three four three five guy. Trey Benson. with with his skill set, I think he would be amazing, and we'd be talking him as a first sure. round draft pick in in the NFL possibly. You know what I mean? But yeah. he he just doesn't quite have that next gear i think to get him there um the so. way he runs too it's kind of it's almost hard to tell how fast he is that's why i asked yeah that's why i asked you guys but he like constantly yeah. beats the angles right. he does the defenders that's why he could be fat that's why i say you mean four fives maybe not even fair because like somebody looks like he's running four five he's probably more like you said a four 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 five guy because he does get the outside really well and then he could beat that and take it to the high like he can get good yardage there i i think you know so it, it's interesting I, I always struggle with this because we have vision as one of our scores. And I think he has solid vision. I don't think it's, like, incredible. I think he has solid vision. But where I really like his vision is in the second level. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he has a really good feel for the leverage of defenders and uh, the angles that they're taking. Like, he seems to... Once it's turned into a punt return out there in the wide openness, yes, he, can, he can work those. He has a very good feel yeah. for that open field. And, and some guys don't have that. Some guys really good at, you know, the, the first level, but not good at the second level. Sure. I he think sees, he's good he at the sees the lanes and he manipulates the lanes as well, which is nice. There were co- I, I do want to note the fact that I did see him kind of go off script or maybe kind of where the play wasn't going a couple times, and it was to, with bad results. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, a couple times, I wanted to at least mention that. So, I don't – I think overall he does have good vision. And, uh-huh. and I even put that – I was like, I think he's got over, overall – but every once in a while, inexplicably – inexplicably – However you say that word, he'll he'll go off kind of script and kind of go cut against the grain, and it usually doesn't work out well for him. Totally agree, and, and that's why that's why he only got a seven, which is above average. Six is average. He got a seven on vision for me because I do think it's above average, but I agree that there's some times where he does he goes a little off script, and some guys are such freak athletes they can get away with some of those things. I don't think he's quite that good of an athlete to get away with some of those kinds of things, especially at the next level. I agree. Jared? I think think he runs extremely well when they run, like, a zone scheme. Like, he really does a nice job of picking and choosing which lane to hit, and he hits it now and gets north and south, and then he does have, like, his, like, elusiveness isn't, like, jump cutting. It's Mm -hmm. more of, like, angling his body differently and shaking off, off like, a a wooden tackle tackle or arm tackle. Um, and the one thing we haven't mentioned yet is I thought he was a really good pass catcher too. Like his, yeah, his totally hands good. were extremely mm-hmm. natural hands catcher, able to catch and run and, and make a guy miss right after and uh, string some moves together. So I'm with you guys. I, I the n- number one con I had for him as far as our nerd score goes was his physicality and ability to break tackles. Uh, is a little higher than Garrett on, on the vision. I had him down as an eight, um, but Garrett's overall score was a little little higher on mine. But I was telling Garrett on the way here, like Brooks was the first guy I did. And now that how everything's kind of shaken out, like I hate when like one of the best guys was the first guy I did. Yeah. I, like I, f- I kind of need. I to always get, like, start in the middle. Up. I do always start. Yeah. I liked your eight though. I, I would give him an eight on vision compared to his seven. Yeah. Uh, la- last thing that I'll say is I have uh, slightly below average uh, for uh, pass protection. Pass protection. I, yeah. I think Same. he he needs some Same. work on pass protection. But he's so young, and, it, and it, that's the thing with Jonathan Brooks as well. Is like he's so young, and he there's so much for him to grow that whatever NFL offense he goes to, if it has some good stability, they, they could really mold him in to fit that scheme, and he could really true be, truly be a three-down back. So, like, if you are desperate for a running back, like, in the back of the first round, now, you might have to be a little patient because, you know, come out the ACL tier, he is real young, so he might be able to rebound quicker than others. You might have, you might not see what you really got there till 2025. Probably. But he might be worth, depending on how this plays out, 
a late first round draft pick in your rookie draft. Because it was no, it was November the ACL. Yeah, so it's he, a later one. At mm-hmm. the combine, he said that he will be ready to go by July first. That he's ahead of schedule. So, which makes sense. Being twenty, how far those surgeries have come. Yeah. How I mean, if we if we were come back from Achilles tears yeah. quicker, we have to imagine these ACL tears. Are to be fair, well. I I don't think I've ever met a player that's behind, I'm behind schedule. I'm behind <laughs> schedule. I don't think this I've is, ever met a player. This isn't going well. Todd Gurley still <laughs> still hasn't come back from his. <laughs> so, so so, but yes, I I do think that there's a good chance he'll be back. And I think it's an interesting draft strategy question, too, because if you're a contender, because that's the range he's going to go is in that contender range, that pick 10 to, you know, and maybe at the beginning if it's 201, 202. We'll go to the Cowboys. Uh, but, Texas. oh, sorry, I meant in your in your rookie drafts. Oh, okay. If you're a contender, it, it, you're going to have to look at your team honestly and say, am I drafting a player to help me win this year? Or do I have enough depth that I'm okay waiting on somebody and not needing this player or this pick, he, but, he might be better served. You know, almost going to the second round, at, right? As, Somebody as a, that can wait a little longer. As a second, on. yeah, as a second player, you know, like you get a nice wide receiver, and then all of a sudden you get a. You but get some a teams back. are so stacked that they are building for the future with their second level. Sure. You know, and they could be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I feel like when you're that late in your rookie draft, like you're always considering the future because there's nobody outside of a running back for the most part, like. Unless you get a freak like outlier or a guy that you get like you didn't see it coming because you're getting the right. seventh best receiver, the fourth best receiver, you're taking guys that aren't aren't going to help you now for the most part. The running back's the best position to help you win now, and it's it's why when I'm a contender, like I'm constantly trading my first round picks right. because I'd rather get two years out of a proven player. Like I'd rather have like an Amari Cooper than an Xavier Worthy because right. I'm a contender. I want to win now. Like I. Right. I'll worry about the future when it's time to worry about the future and, and blow it up. But and that's how I play Dynasty. You wouldn't trade a first for Amari Cooper there, though. No, I wouldn't trade for a first for Amari Cooper either. But if I have 112 and that's I need a receiver. Sounded like I just wanted you to get okay. chances. So, so Josh Jacobs instead of Aaron Brooks. Yeah. Or, I'll, uh, I'll, Brooks. Actually, and I will take that back, potentially. Like, if it had the best I could do was Amari Cooper, which now they got Jerry Judy, so it's a little, it might change a little things a little bit. But, like, a player of that caliber, right? Like, and I needed a receiver. And I had to give a 112 for that, but I think I'm going to get two years of wide receiver one or high-end wide receiver two production. I don't have a problem doing that because, again, my main focus is winning. Because I know, the for the most part, a, a player like Xavier Worthy, um, maybe like an Adonai Mitchell, like those guys aren't probably going to help me win now. Like, right. could unless I hit on a Puka, like a Nakua kind of performance, right? Like, right. The, but the, typically when you draft running backs, you are looking for the win now. Win immediate now. production. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's a hashtag two to three-year window. You're only getting th- two to three years out of those so guys. that's why he's lucky. a little different than some of the other guys. So Jonathan sense. Brooks out of Texas, very good prospect Absolutely. here. Very happy with him. If I if I'm getting, you know, Caleb Williams at one one super flex, I'm happy with this pick. If I'm getting I think he's way highly le- more likely in a one QB rookie draft to go in the first round of your rookie draft than a super flex league. We're in a super flex league. He's probably going to go in the top of the second, most likely. Um, he'll probably go in the back end of the first in a one QB league. But I feel very comfortable even in a super flex league getting a guy like Caleb Williams here and knowing I can take a reach on a receiver later on. Um, if I'm in a one QB league still, if, if somehow a guy like him is there at 2 1, I'm real ecstatic going Marvin Harrison Jr. and then coming away with like a Jonathan Brooks. I feel like I have a really good rookie draft with a lot of high upside to help my team turn that corner from going worst to first. 